This is Metz's flat, and it's time to turn on the gas. Will you please welcome Max Alderson and Tom Metcalf? This is Gascast. <laughs> Welcome, Gassers, to this week's episode of Gascast. I'm your host, Tom Metcalf. I'm joined by Max Alderson and special guest, Lance Cook. How are you, lads? Very good. Very good, thank you. Before we start the show, we just want to do a recap of what we know regarding the future of the club. As last week, the Bristol Post reported that a second consortium are interested in buying Bristol Rovers. Former Palermo chairman Clive Richardson is said to be the driving figure behind this rival consortium who want to invest in a portfolio of football clubs in the UK and Europe. The original UK-based consortium are still in negotiations with Total Produce over the purchase of the fruit market site, Total Produce being the majority shareholders at the site, with other smaller shareholders reportedly agreeing to the offer. Now, there's lots of unknowns. All we really know is the Bristol Post have reported about the fruit market and this new consortium haven't made contact with the club although they have made their interest public. For now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Rest assured, if there are any major developments, we'll be covering them. So let's get stuck into Saturday. Another 1-0 win at home. What did you make of the performance, Max? Yeah, it was, it was just a solid solid performance, really. I think it was, it was a very difficult game, obviously, given the absence of, of Johnson Clark Harris uh, through injury, which we'll go on to talk about a bit more. Um, later on in the episode um, so it was a big task really and I think it, everyone was sort of just keen to see how we do um, without our main man and I think we were just solid professional um, I think we were we were the better side by far we were more organized we created more chances and at the back we were just immense so yeah a really really good win and um, just yeah really impressive and I'm, I'm really impressed with the side and how they stepped up a kind of similar performance to Rotherham I guess that was quite a functional win as well similar yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, they they are pretty similar. I mean, I, th- I think Rotherham were were a better side um, as as we've now seen them go on to beat Coventry four 0 away, um, and they had I think they won again on Saturday. Um, so I think they were a much better side than MK Dons, who have struggled in recent weeks. Um, MK were were very poor, I thought, especially at the back. Um, Tyler Smith got in behind them quite easily without really exerting himself too much, um, and we created a, a decent amount of chances, and they never really threatened us. So. I didn't think they were a particularly difficult opponent, but I think the circumstances that we were playing under were difficult, given that we'd lost our main man and the psychology of the game. So, yeah, it was largely impressive and, and, a, and a very good win and a welcome three points. Lance, would you say it was more a case of us being uh, good or MK being really poor that got us the victory, do you think? Uh, I think it was more a case of us being good. Like, you know, we, we did the good stuff well. Um, it, it's so good to see us be a little bit more stubborn, a little bit, you know, a bit of a nasty streak in us now, which, you know, we've seen so many teams, you know, come to the members' opposition. Um, the game management at the end was immense, you know, four minutes of injury time, I think it was, and we absolutely bossed that. Um, yeah, I think, you know, for us to be a frustrating side to watch as, as an opposition fan, is quite nice. It's, it's, it's different, and I like it. You said about the game management, and I think it's something we might have struggled with a lot at the start of the season. Do you think... Did defenders, like in particular, deserve a lot of praise for seeing that timeout, Max? Um, yeah, massively. I mean, the I th- I th- well, to be f- to be fair, I think the whole team plays a part, especially in the midfield covering that back line. But the amount of headers that Tom Davies, Kilgore, and Tony Craig won um, in that last ten minutes was immense because we were coming under some big pressure from MK Dons, and there were lots of crosses coming into the box. Even even Van Stappershoof in goal was making himself big and physical and, and claiming loads of crosses. So I think. The entire defence as a unit was just superb. It was integral to holding on to the three points and, and, and ultimately getting us those three points come come the full-time whistle. And um, it's really been sort of probably the most impressive part of our team uh, has been that defence because they haven't played together. Davies is a new signing. Kilgore's obviously come into the side from the youth team. Craig has been there, but he's not played with those two before. And we've got two new wing-backs. I mean, Rodman hasn't really played wing-back before. And even... Before that, we had Josh Hare playing there and Mark Little and Leahy on the left. So they're they're all players who've never really played together, and they've been so solid. It's been it's been really really impressive, and I would say it's probably one of the primary factors as to why we are where we are. Lance, do you think uh, Jordi kind of filled the Ecola-sized hole in goal 
adequately for the game? Absolutely. He got a clean sheet first and foremost. So, you know, that, that speaks volumes. And like Max was saying, like, you know, the, the back, the, the back line is, is probably the most impressive thing I've, I've picked up on from this season. They're so great to watch. Um, you know, with that three of Davis, Kilgore and Craig, uh, fantastic. But with, yeah, with Van Stappershoff, um, he, he settled in well. It's great to see him, like, you know, come on leaps and bounds with each game. So I thought he didn't do a bad against Accrington either when he stepped in for Ancy then. Do we think, moving on to the midfield, I'll, I'll go to you first, Lance. Do you think Ollie Clark's going to get back in at all now he's back from injury? Uh, it certainly will be tough for him. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of break into a side that does so well and, you know, being unbeaten since the start of September. But, you know, you can't, you know, I think it will be tough. It will be tough. Max? Yeah, I mean, he, it is difficult because he's the club captain. Um, it's very difficult to justify giving someone the captain's armband in the summer and then dropping them to the bench and saying, I'm sorry, you're not good enough for the starting eleven because uh, the club captain is, is a very important role. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm massively of the opinion that you have captains all over the pitch, you have leaders throughout the team, and I think Tony Craig exemplifies that. Um, and he's done a very good job with the armband. Um, but I think it's going to be... I think Oli himself will find it difficult to, to sit on the bench given that he's been given that role by Coughlin over the summer. But if you're talking to me personally as, as what my opinion is as to should he get back on the side, I don't think he should, no. I think Circum's come back from injury and I think he's been great. I think he's been what we've been missing. A little bit of something different going forwards. He's he's great on with those volleyed shots on the edge of the area. He's great at, at those progressive passes, especially out to the to the wing backs who are now getting higher up the pitch. Um, I think he he is definitely what we've been missing, and and as he hopefully gains match fitness week on week, I think he's he's going to grow from strength to strength, and hopefully get his goal scoring touch back as well, because we've massively missed his goals, and uh, we're starting to see. I hope the Liam Circum of a couple of seasons ago, rather than the Liam Circum of last season, who was sort of playing all over the pitch in different positions he wasn't naturally comfortable with. And hopefully we can get back to that and, yeah, push forwards. I agree. And I've been saying pretty much since the start of the season that I think giving Oli the captaincy is a bit of a mistake because, to me, you don't drop your captain. That's the person who's on the pitch playing the maximum amount of minutes. And I don't think his performances have warranted that. And I think the little spell that he's been out of the team, I think we've we've been better, frankly. So him getting back in, I think it's going to be a tough one. Um, let's talk about JCH missing. Do we miss him? Yeah, I think we did miss him quite a lot, to be honest. Um, I think we should have won that game 2 or 3 nil, maybe 4 nil. We created a lot of chances, a lot of quality chances as well particularly from, from Rodman and Leahy, who got some decent crosses into the box. And even a go-go and up, up some were playing some good balls forward into the channels to um, to Smith. Um, but unfortunately, as it is our Achilles heel is our finishing up front in our other strikers. And I don't think Smith or, or, or Nichols were particularly sharp um, at getting their shots away when they were in good positions. Uh, and that was frustrating. And I think if Johnson was in the side... Uh, he would have put a couple of those away. And um, interestingly, when I was talking to Jeff Twentyman on, on Saturday after the game, a um, little plug there, I was on the radio. Yeah, so that was a lovely <laughs> plug, yeah. <laughs> Almost didn't realise it, yeah. there. Um, he, he was saying that, uh, and he raised a really good point, that with Johnson up front, you don't have to be so precise with your passing because he's such a mobile target. He's big and he's mobile and he puts himself in front of the, the centre-back that you only need to, need to vaguely aim at him and he'll get in front of that defender, bring it down and buy himself five yards of space. Whereas with Nichols and Smith, it's a lot more difficult. You need it straight to their feet. And we weren't doing that at all. And it was noticeable because they really struggled to get it under control. Lance, do you think, given that Johnson's going to be out for a little while and we're looking at Smith and Nichols up front, do you think we should change shape to try and suit those players rather than, like Max said, like kind of lumping it vaguely up to Johnson? Uh, I'm not too sure. I mean, like the, the shape should stay as it is because it is a winning formula at the moment. I think w with Johnson, not only are you missing his goals, you're you're missing the fact he's the the most fouled player in the league. You know, buying those free kicks, you're missing the sort of like knock-ons, and it's just trying to find that replacement uh, replacement in the squad um, who can settle into that team and do that role. Whether it's someone like Circum, whether it's Adeboyeo, um, I don't know. But um, that's yeah, that's what I think on that one. Do you think 
Adebayo could be that player because he's he's bigger than Smith. He, like you kind of look at the players, the starting front two of JCH and Nichols, and you see one big man, one small man, and then you look at Adebayo and Smith, and you look at pretty much like for like replacements. Yeah, certainly. I mean, he fits the bill. Um, um, when he started. I think he started against Chelsea's under 21s. He bagged himself a goal. I think he might just need a run in the side to sort of like, you know, maybe get himself going a bit. And with, with the games coming up that Johnson's missing, hopefully um, he can get that run and not be on the bench. Yeah, Graham did say it was a, a big chance for all the other players to, they're going to be glad in a way that Johnson's injured because it gives them a chance. Um, he did uh, court some controversy, did GC, about the leak in the camp about Johnson's injury, do you think he's making a bit of a mountain out of a molehill? Like he did kind of with Lines' 500, 400, whatever it was, kind of uh, appearances, Max? Yeah, I, I don't think he is. I think it's a very serious issue, if I'm honest with you. Um, I don't think you can really quite... Um, <laughs> I think it can't be exaggerated how big an issue it is because something like that is such a major piece of news. Johnson is our best player. Every week, whoever we're playing, they're going to be planning and training all week to play against Johnson. Their game plan is going to be how to stop him and how to counter him and score goals against us. And now that that's out in the public domain that he's out for four or five weeks, the next batch of opponents we're playing, they they know that they've not got to worry about it. They're going to plan something different. They, they're going to look at Nichols. They're going to look at Smith. They're going to look at Adebayo and they're going to think we can play more physical centre-backs and we're not going to have so many problems. Whereas if Johnson was in the side, they'd have to prepare a little bit more how to maybe counteract him and not foul him so much. Not, not, you know, he is the most foul player in the league. How not to sort of fall, fall, fall victim to his to his ways. Um, and with, and, and it's just really frustrating because had that news not come out, the teams were playing next: Doncaster, Pompey, Bolton. They don't know if he's injured or not. They may see that he didn't play in the last game. They don't know if it's a knock. They don't know if he's out for for a week they don't know if he's out for five weeks but now that that's out there these teams know that they're not got to worry about that and they can prepare for that and that statistically puts us at a disadvantage versus them not knowing that that's fair enough um in his latest interview he, he's pretty certain that who it is it sounds like he's got a bit of a, a vendetta to be honest uh what do you think lance do you think he's a bit of a vindictive person who would you see um, I don't know. I, I think maybe maybe he's of the sort of personality, the mentality that, similar to DC, he has to have his back against the wall, you know, in, in fight out of that to, to get the best out of himself and others. Um, maybe it's that. Um, I don't know, but it's certainly not good that there's, there's a leak going on because, you know, we've always had that injury news on lockdown and that's what's kept us pretty well over the years. No, it's good. Um I noticed actually from the highlights I wasn't there, but we tried quite a few short corners rather than lumping it into the box. Do you think, obviously Davis scored from a, a short corner, do you think that's kind of a more of a way to go going forward, even if JCH is in the box, or do you think we changed it because he, he wasn't the physical presence in the box, Max? I'm not sure. It was interesting to see that we tried something different. I don't think we've scored a particularly high amount of set pieces over the years. Um, Coughlin, in his day, was a centre-back. That's obviously where he got his goals from. Um, it's good to see that we're trying more of that and, and trying something different because I think maybe our initial corner di corner delivery isn't great, but maybe laying it off, moving around a little bit, finding a better angle and then getting the cross in seems to be get, finding a little bit more success. It wasn't just Davies's goal. He had a great chance moments before, which was somehow saved by Lee Nichols, which was another good uh, set-piece routine. So, yeah, it's good to see us trying different things. And I don't think it's necessarily because Johnson's not in the team. It's just that I think we may be trying to explore that side of goal scoring opportunities versus just open play and scoring from open play. I think it's good that we're trying that because, you know, you need goals all, all through your team, especially when your best players are out injured. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like maybe we're trying that because uh, hair's ain't as well, because his deliveries were absolutely excellent. Um, Lance, the, the crowd on Saturday was around about seven, 800, uh, as in 7,800. Are we seeing the missing fans come back? Uh, slowly but surely, it seems. Um, I know there was an offer on uh, for season ticket holders to bring a couple of mates for for a cheaper price, and you know, thankfully, we got a win from that. So, you know, to see that a good, hard working performance, a one 0 win, fourth in the league, you know, slowly but surely, you know, we are going to get back to like you know the sort of days of you know nine thousand a booming men, 
um you know which is what you want because you know when you've got that full house you know believe me when you're walking across the pitch once the teams are out you know it is it must be just frightening for opposition players just i mean it's frightening for me sometimes you know <laughs> but uh yeah i think so like you said we're up to fourth now are you daring to dream <laughs> it's still a little bit early in the season isn't it but you know it's certainly a lot better to be looking at this end of the table than you know this time last year when it was a little bit more bleak um all we got to do is just keep on going and you know see where it takes us we're coming up to christmas the league's a little bit in a in a weird place with all the sort of situation with Bolton and Berry and maybe not a level itself out in time but all we got to do is just keep playing and keep winning and who knows where we're at I don't even need to ask you, Max. I'm sure you're dreaming already. Oh, you know me, Tom. You know me. Um, I'm ever the optimist. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I, look, I don't know. This season, if I'm honest, I was expecting us to be largely uh, bottom half of the table. That's where I sort of looked at the squad over the summer and thought, we've got goals on us in Johnson, but I wasn't overly enamoured with the style of play last season and I didn't particularly think our summer was, was very strong with the players we brought in. And I was sort of looking at maybe 15th, 16th place. For us to be fourth in the league, and in my opinion, we've not been fantastic, it's, it's just it's just a massive opportunity. The league's not particularly strong, there's lots of inconsistent sides, and all it's taken is us to be a little bit consistent at home for us to climb that table. And I think it's possible. I think we've got a good shot. Um, don't get me wrong, we've got some tough fixtures coming up, and I think we're going to get a better idea of where we are as a team in this league closer to Christmas, because obviously that's the halfway mark. We would have played everyone in the league. Um, but at the minute, you know, why not? Let's enjoy it. We're fourth in the league. We're winning games. There's a good atmosphere at the club and there's a great team spirit in the squad. So let's revel in it. Let's enjoy it. And let's see how far this group can go. I can already see you're, you're thinking of Leeds away. <laughs> I, I, I can see it in your face. No, you're I'm thinking of Everton away, mate, because they're coming away. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Tom? How, how about you? Are you uh, getting a bit optimistic or you, you're generally in the middle, aren't you? Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm with Lance actually. It's a bit too early. I think once once we get, if we get to Christmas and we're still hovering around those playoff places, I'm, I'm going to start to dare to dream. But for now, I'll, I'll keep a lid on it. Um, turning to you, Lance, uh, seeing as we've got you on, it'd be a miss of us to not ask you a few one-on-one -on -one questions uh, to get you to know you a bit better. So tell us how you started supporting the gas. Well, um, I lived in Cardiff um, in my early years. Um, and dad, mum and dad, both Bristolian, dad's a massive gas head. And he always wanted to take me to like Rovers and I would always like refuse. I'd rather go shopping with mum, like, you know, for the first few Saturdays when he was like, <laughs> God knows why. Like, um, and then my first game, I think it was in the 93, 94 season at Ninian Park, like so a proper baptism, baptism of fire. Um, Cardiff versus Rovers. Um, I think I remember John Taylor scoring like an early goal for them and then from then on it was just like trying to get to Twerton as much as we could like you know the, the commute from Cardiff to Bath um, trying to watch as many games as we could and it just sort of built from there um, managed to go to Wembley in the 95-96 the uh, season and then when we moved to the Mem it was a little bit more easy well we moved to Bristol in 95 so it was a little bit more easier for us um, but yeah, it was all it was all my dad's uh, all my dad's doing, um, and uh, yeah, we sort of continued that on now. Which is, I, th I think we all blame our dads for taking us to Rovers because if they didn't, <laughs> well, I'd be a lot happier these days. Yeah, than, well, than all these years of misery <laughs> following the guys. Yeah, that's it. It's a lot certainly, so, as well. it certainly like translates to other parts of life where you're sort of used to it. Sometimes, eh? Like, but. and how did you end up taking over from Nick Day on the old PA duty? Wow. Well, um, so just started the second season. So this would have been about last April. Um, I'll never forget the day. Um, I had a missed call from Nick. I think it was before the Blackburn game, like in that particular season, the one where Linesy scored at the end, 1-1 one -one draw. I thought it was just going to be a call for, you know, for me to take over from him because that sort of happened a lot in that time. Um, so he left me a voicemail. Can you give me a call? Um, I went somewhere over in Clifton on my lunch break um, from work. I gave him a call. Uh, he said, "Are you sitting down?" I'm like, "Yeah." And then he was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Like, I'm gonna leave at the end of the season." Um, there was a few conditions with that, um, like family reasons and stuff like that. The main reason was that he wanted to leave, knowing I was going to take over. Um, 
and like you know you're sucking air there and you're like bloody hell like he's like do you want to take it and i was like well yeah of course um and from then a week later it went public um and it was amazing like you know the the response to that i've had birthdays and christmases where my phone's never blown up as it did that day when it went public and all the stuff like for nick was great you know people you know they were gutted that it was going but at the same time there was like loads of people who were like wishing me well and i you know to every one of those you know i i thank greatly because that that helped us along because Hey, it's like when David Moyes took over Sir Alex Ferguson, eh? Like, you know, it, I felt like I was on a bit of a hiding to nothing for all that 20, you know, 20 odd years that Nick was doing it. So, but no, it, that's, that's how I've got into it and, and, but, and look back since. But you were helping out before that for quite a few years, helping Nick on a match day and that. Yeah, yeah. So that was about 17 years of doing that. Started in the 2001-2 season, a month before I was 16. God knows why Nick just, you know, took me on. Um, but it, it's a dream job. Like, you know, I love music. I love, I love the gas, um, for me to sort of like play a part in that for as long as I did, um, w was great. And all right, like a lot of the seasons weren't particularly great, but you know, you sort of like take those seasons, like the promotion, um, the, you know, the double promotions, the 2006, seven promotion, the, the, the wins against city, uh, Lambert's goal. You know, you have to take those moments with you, but um, it's it's been a ride, man. Like, it's, it's been a ride and to sort of, like, be a little bit more closer to the action than most is something that I'll never take for granted. So what does a match day involve for you? So uh, match days, um, I mean, a lot of people seem to think you can just, like, turn up at half two, get on the mic and, you know, sort of do your thing. But there's a lot of preparation that goes into that. Uh, lots of emails um, sort of in between, like, requests, like, tweets and stuff like that, requests stuff um like for instance like my, uh saturday we had um the under nines from our academy to introduce at halftime so it's just gathering notes for that um and even stuff on the day itself like we had um, a couple of members of the gas girls team uh help out to do the draws um and it was fantastic to like sort of like see how they got on in the first month of their season so far and you sort of gather questions for that it's sort of similar to what you guys do you know like you have to do a lot of prep work in order for the you know for the big show uh, when it comes to the to the actual day itself, we rock up one thirty, play some tunes. Very very strenuous testing of playlists. Like I still can't like let go of the control of that. Um, and then we go into it two thirty with the with the main show as you guys sort of start coming into the ground and yeah, it's 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 great. So, so a lot of people, yeah, sorry, a lot a lot of people don't realise it's, it's it's a completely voluntary job as well, isn't it? You're not a club, you're not paid by the club to do what you do. You you volunteer on on a week on a weekend. Yeah, that's it. And I I I think is the case for most like sort of stadium announcers at our level. And you know, you can tell like you know you've you've been to away grounds and you could probably tell like you know those who are maybe you know not so much a fan than they are a genuine fan and. That's the thing with me. I, I've always been a fan first and foremost, and I'm I'm incredibly lucky to have this opportunity to sort of like cheerlead every Saturday um, for the for the gas. And um, yeah, it's 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 completely voluntary. But you know what? Like, it, it's it, it's a great gig to have. You know, it's opened up you know a lot of like sort of lessons, and not just like you know over there in life in general. It's sorted out my confidence big time like you know because yeah. you know that, that that deserted me like you know once upon a time but i've got it back now it's all good <laughs> and you know got your swagger it. back that's it that's it that's what it's all about are there any like obviously you're very close to the players in like the tunnel and all that kind of stuff you got any any memorable stories from uh you see like bits of banter knocking about in the tunnel just before the teams come out um like i remember one time there was like Lee, Lee Brown like lining up in the tunnel and he saw the referee and he's just like oh not this ref like you know like and just just being a bit because Browner was like I always thought he was like king of the banter like but the thing is like on, on a match day with the players you know they're in the zone you know we're we're half an hour away from kickoff I'm ha you know I'm in the middle of doing my thing so in terms of the players itself we don't really get that much time to sort of like have a chat or anything like that but it's more a case of like meeting up with the guys who, who also work at the club. Um, there's the two Tonys who are like the referees' liaisons, um, Tom, who's uh, the assistant kit man, uh, Tom Foley. And even like, the, you know, the guys up in the board, it, it's just great to like sort of catch up with them. And, you know, it, it's great to give you like sort of validation for the job that you're doing. 
do you get final say off on final sign off on what the players walk out to and come out to at halftime? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I had to get permission um, to sort of change it up this season. Um, we've gone with the Puff Daddy, Jimmy Page version of uh, Cashmere from the Godzilla movie for the first half run out. Um, I've wanted to use that for years. It's a good strutting song, you know, gets you ready. And, you know, it's, it's been un- unbeaten so far, in <laughs> yeah. the league at least. Like, yeah, so, Result, you know, results speak for themselves. <laughs> that's it. Like, so I'd like to think I've had a hand in that. But, um, but yeah, like the second half tune, I'll always go for something a little bit more energetic and we've changed that up. We had Insomnia by Faithless last season um, and we've gone for like the, uh, the Pendulum remix of the Prodigy's Voodoo People, which I believe has gone down pretty well uh, amongst you guys so far. So, you know, again, it's unbeaten. Um, we'll keep on rolling with it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Can't can't argue with the results. Before we move on to the player spotlight, I'd like to draw your attention to our Patreon. If you're loving the improved quality and quantity of the pods, then please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash gascast. For the cost of a pint a month, it would help us upgrade our recording equipment so we can keep up the quality of our recordings and help cover our costs. Big up to George Clements and Samuel White for becoming our patrons recently. Hugely appreciate the support chaps. Our player spotlight this week is Tyler Smith on loan from Sheffield United. Four goals in all competitions so far. What do you make of him, Lance? Turning out to be uh, a good striker for us. A guy who can score goals. He's developed a really good relationship with Johnson, I feel, uh, when they've been up front together. Um, And a great finisher. Uh, The goal against Gillingham was outstanding, I thought. And, you know, don't really see, like, you know, many, many strikers coming to us in recent years doing that. And, yeah, long may it continue. He's doing a good job. Max? Yeah, I, I like him. Uh, I, I think he's something different to what we've had in recent years. Um, he's, he's very, very quick. I noticed that especially against MK Dons. He was running the channels and, and really sort of getting the ball and running at the defenders and, and making them making them back up a little bit and buying a bit of space. Um, and he's got a great strike in him, like you said, Lance. He's, he's a great finisher. Um, he's not had too many clear-cut chances been presented to him. Um, I think a lot of those just go directly to Johnson, but now he's sort of the forefront of the attack. Maybe he's starting to get a little bit more um, delivery to him. Uh, we'll see as the weeks go on. I'm excited to see how he does. I think he's a good player. Um, I think, he, like I said, he's something a bit different. Um, and and yeah, he, I think he, he's very effective uh, at what he does. And hopefully with the right partner, he starts to sort of kick it up a gear because that's what we need from from all of our front forwards at the minute with, with Johnson out. Yeah, for a small lad, he is slight and he's not especially tall, so he's not going to be winning any headers, but he is quite wiry, tends to hold it, shield the ball very well. Who would you want as a partner for him? Are you looking like a, a Nichols to play off him or an Adebayo or who are you um, thinking? It's difficult to say because Nichols played alongside him on Saturday and I thought Nichols was largely quite poor. Um, he didn't. He sort of shied away from quite a lot of things. He didn't win many headers. He didn't really try and link up with Smith too much other than that chance where Smith squared it to him and he he shot narrowly wide, which really he should have finished. Um, Other than that, I thought over the game they didn't really do too much as a partnership. It's difficult because I think think Smith's got a lot of different attributes about him. He's got his... he, He is quite... He does... I know he's not particularly strong, but he uses his body well to buy fouls hold the ball up where he can and lay it off. But he's also very, very quick and he's got a great strike. So he's got different tools. I think what we need is someone big up front next to him. Johnson does that very well. I think Adebayo could potentially be that guy. Lance, you were saying earlier that you'd like like to maybe see him have a run in the side now. I would too. I think those two up front are hopefully what we're going to see over the next few games. Lance, are you seeing him as a bit of a, an upgrade on Riley? Or are you seeing him as a, a, a kind of different player? Uh, kind of like a different player. I mean, the thing with Riley last season is that we never really got to see, like, you know, what he could do. I just don't feel like he had a fair crack of the whip uh, last season with us, um, where Smith's getting a little bit more of that now. Um, but, yeah, certainly, you, you look at the face of it this season, he's been scoring goals, and, yeah, like, the, the stats don't lie. He probably is an upgrade at the moment. If Sheffield, because he is kind of loaned out to us, and Sheffield United fans are very keen on him coming back. But if they did, for whatever reason, just deem him surplus to requirements, would you would you have him permanently? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no no brainer for me. I think um, I 
I think we missed the boat out on Jakubiak last season. I would have liked to have seen him back in the summer, but with Smith, um, I think that's a work in progress there. That's someone who I feel could like, you know, bang in like, you know, 10, 15 goals a season with, with a run of games and a bit more work. Max? Yeah, I agree. I think he would be a good acquisition. It's difficult to know whether he features in Sheffield United's plans. Obviously, they're Premier League now. That's a, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Um, there's a lot more pressure on Premier League clubs to bring in top quality strikers to especially sides um, in the lower half of the table they rely on goals from strikers to keep them up and I, I'm not sure if Tyler's going to come into that Sheffield United side anytime soon and, and be that man um, so he may be loaned out for a few more years I know Jaku- is Jakubiak on loan at Gillingham from Watford or is, was he released by Watford do you guys uh, know? I'm not too sure i would very on the side of him I, being I think, on loan again I think he is on loan which which surprises me because he's a bit older but Smith is 20, 21 he's got his best years ahead of him um, he's developing really well I think Doncaster quite liked him um, it's difficult to know whether they release him or not but I would happily take him on loan again next season if, if he carries on I think he's a great option he's a great addition to the squad um, I think we'll probably bring in some other strikers as well but I think he's done himself no harm at all uh, um, starting his career in the Football League and hopefully we can um, I don't know maybe maybe as a project maybe Coughlin's whispering in his ear and saying come on come sign for me and, and permanently join this side and get get uh, 40, 46 games under your belt every, every year Yeah I wonder if uh, Sheffield United did get relegated if they take him back. I think Premier yeah. League's definitely a step up f- too far for him at the minute, but Championship maybe as yeah. a, maybe a bit more of a well, bit part. You, s- you saw with Ollie McBurney when he went on loan to to us. Um, and he went on to Barnsley, sorry, when um, when Swansea were in the Premier League and he scored um, from January onwards. I think he scored like eleven goals for Barnsley in the Championship, and then when Swansea came down. He was ready made for the championship and obviously he scored 20 plus goals and got a great move to Sheffield United uh, back to the Premier League. Now, Tyler Smith may be a different story because he's playing League One, um, but I think he could be right with his age and what the attributes he has. If Sheffield, Sheffield United do go down, I think they probably would keep him. But the longer they stay in the Premier League, the, I think the less likely it is that Tyler's going to get an opportunity there. I agree. What do, what do you think? Do you, would you like to see him in, permanently added or do you think that's a bit too ambitious? I don't think it's ambitious. Uh, like you said, he's young lads. Um, I don't know if I would like to see him, to be honest. I think he's good. He's shown flashes. He is a young lad. Uh, is there better out there for the money? Probably. I'm kind of on the fence. I think if, if Graham and uh, Widrington take a view that, yeah, he's got a lot more to come from him, I'm happy to trust their judgment. They've been pretty spot on so far with their yeah. their signings. And what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's look ahead to the Doncaster game. Uh, their last five results have been three losses, a win and a draw. Pretty mixed results. They're currently sat in 11th place. Max, do you think we're going to break our voodoo there and actually get a result? Or do you think we're going to slump to a usual defeat? It's difficult to say. I mean, Doncaster, they started well this season. I think they've dropped off in recent weeks. Like you say, their form isn't isn't uh, particularly great. Um, but they're a good side. Um, we've all always seemed to struggle at deep moat. Um, it's a difficult ground for us. I think last year we got turned over four one on telly on uh, the eye follow, didn't we? Um, wasn't particularly a great, great result for us, and we've always struggled there. So it's difficult to get over that mentality. But I thought we'd get hammered at Lincoln, and we won one nil. So um, it's very difficult. I think, I think we've got a chance at winning it. We're 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 an informed team. Um, but we're missing our talisman and away from home we seem to like to play a smash and grab sort of tactic and without our smash we're not really going to grab much so I think it could be difficult but there's a chance Lance uh, they lost their top goal scorer John Marquis in the summer to Pompey they've pretty much struggled for goals James Coppinger is their uh, top goal scorer with three to me this has got draw written all over it what do you reckon? It's certainly uh, a game like 30 seconds ago, I would have said I'd have taken a draw out, but I didn't realise the form that they're in. Um, so that's something. I'd certainly, would I take a draw still? Probably. Uh, it's, you know, it'd be a point away from home that we didn't get last year. Um, but, you know, you've got to remember, yeah, like as Max said, Johnson's out and there are a few more injuries in the squad as well. So maybe a draw wouldn't be that bad. But, yeah, it, you know, we're we're the form team. They're not on, on form, so who knows? Like, you know, we are... We could take our stubbornness there and get something, maybe. 
I agree with Max. I think, yeah, smash and grab tactics away from home and Johnson's been integral to that. I think we're going to struggle to score. Where do you think goals are going to come from away from home, especially? Well, I think Liam Circum's got to step up. I said that earlier in in the episode. Um, I think he, at attacking midfield, offered us so much under Daryl Clark. And even when he played out wide, cutting inside and shooting, I think he got something like 12, 13 league goals when he came in and he's definitely got it in his locker and we, we saw a couple of good half volleys on Saturday. I'm really looking at him as as, as that guy to step up and sort of uh, play off those two strikers and get a couple of shots from the edge of the area. Um, he's done it in the past. I know he can do it and I think it's about time he sort of showed us what he's capable of because we, we all know he can do it and, and I think it's so important for us with Johnson out to get those goals and for him to step up. Um, but it's a collective responsibility, I think. So it shouldn't just be on one person. It should be on everyone to take their chances because we do miss a lot of simple chances all over the pitch. Um, and it's frustrating because you can't just rely on one person because you'll come unstuck. Yeah, like you said, uh, I think you mentioned it, Lance, actually. The injuries are starting to pile up now. Circum came off injured on Saturday. Who are you looking at? If he was out on Saturday, who are you looking at to step in? I know... Um, Hargreaves came in for him on Saturday, but then you've got Ollie Clark, you've got Tomlinson. Who yeah, would you slot in? Ollie Clark wasn't on the bench on Saturday, was was he? So I think he may still be injured as well. So um <laughs> may, might be a left wing choice, a left field choice, but I would I would start Tomlinson. Um Big talk. It is big talk. I mean I don't think Bennett I really don't I really don't want to invest time in Bennett. I think he's I think he's a goner. I think I think his time's his time's <laughs> limited at Rovers. I think he'll either be gone in January, or he'll be gone in the summer. I think he his his, his he's in the wind shop window really every time he comes on, and he's so frustrating to watch. And he, for me, he's not worth in, investing the game time in. I'd much rather see see us play Hargreaves, see us play Tomlinson, develop a bit of youth. Kind exactly, of thing. yeah. And as Tomlinson is that attacking midfield role, I think why not? You know, I, I don't really think realistically we're going to go up. This is the perfect season for us to blood our youngsters, as we've seen with Kilgore. I think he wants to play Luca Hall maybe a little bit as well. And, and, and he said in preseason how much he likes Tomlinson and how much he reminds him of Jack Payne and that, that sort of attacking midfield player. It's one game. Play him. See how he does. You know, who knows? It's, it's a great opportunity. Lance, Max has just said he doesn't think we're going to go up. But do you think if we are going to stand any chance of getting into the playoffs or promotion... An out of form Doncaster team, those are the kind of games we need to be winning or taking points from. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like, you know, the, the points, there's points that we've picked up already that I haven't expected us to pick up, like Lincoln away, like, as Max said earlier, um, you know, home games against Oxford. I, I think we've started to do that already. Um, and yeah, this is another opportunity for get to get three points on the board, albeit with a sort of like, you know, a bandaged up squad. Uh, but I, I feel like we're more than capable to do the uh, do the job on Saturday. Confident. Okay, given that, what are your score predictions? I'm going to go first, and I'm going to say I'm going to be really boring and say nil nil. <laughs> I'll go for you, you first, Nat uh, Lance, because you are confident. I say I'm confident, but I'm, I'm realistic as well. Uh, my my prediction would be one one. Yeah. Your, sorry, before you go, who's your goal scorer? Oh. Um, Let's go with, let's go with Smith. Smith, all right, fair. Um, I'm also going to go with one-one. I Ooh. think I think a, a win is a bit a step too far for us. Um, like Lance said, I think we're going to have a pretty bandaged up squad and maybe a few, a few rotations in in the starting lineup. That's maybe not our first choice. Um, so I think one-one's fair. I agree with you what you were saying, Mets. I think we will maybe struggle to score, but I think we will get one. The defense is solid, but I think. Doncaster have got a lot of experience in their squad, especially with Coppinger. He's 38 years old and still scoring goals. So, um, yeah, he's one to watch, I think, one to watch out for. So, 1-1, one, one, and I think the goal is going to come from, I'm going to say, Alex Rodman header. Rodman header? Yeah. Wow. Far that's post. very specific. You going to put a bet on that? That would no. be some good odds on that. Good yeah, odds on that, wouldn't it? Yeah, surely. I, I did put, um, when we played Shrewsbury last season at home, it was a, it was a crucial bottom-of-the-table clash. Um, I had uh, I had school pre- school prediction of two one Rovers and uh, Alex Rodman f- uh, first goal scorer, 
and um, we went one up through Alex Romney, <laughs> and then uh, drew one one, and I was like, "Got it." It was one one. I was like begging for another goal to come in, but Absolutely it just never did. Devastating. So yeah, don't don't bet on don't bet on football, guys. It's especially not on Rovers. I got enough emotion riding on it already. That's a good point. I'm upset with both of you thinking that we're going to concede because I just can't I can't see it at the minute the way the defense is playing. I just That's a fair see point. It at all. Well, that's it for this week, Gasheads. Um, remember, if you've enjoyed this, please remember to subscribe. And if you really enjoyed it, please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps other people find the pod and it helps with all the magical algorithms and all that. Just leaves me to say, up the gas. Up the gas. Up the gas. Up the gas.